Welcome back to the Paddle and Fin Podcast Network. We're brought to you by Pelican Built Tough. For all situations, go to pelican.com. Yak Gadget. For all your fine kayak fishing accessory needs, go to yakgadget.com. Eastport Marina on the beautiful shores of Dale Hollow Lake. For all your lodging, kayaking, and fishing needs, go to eastport.info. Now let's get this show started. All right, guys. Hey, it's Takeover Saturday on the Paddle and Fin Networks. John Rapp. Let's do this. Welcome to a special edition of the Rusty Hook Podcast, streaming live on Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook. One hour of straight talk regarding tournament news, angler profiles, gear reviews, and more. Now let's get our show started by joining with John Rapp, our host. All right, guys, welcome to the Rusty Hook Kayak Fishing Podcast. John Rapp here, your host. Got a good show for you tonight. Apologize for not doing a live show this past Tuesday. I'm just trying to get back into the mix of things. Been a little under the weather, been on the road, so a lot of things going on. But I'm, I'm going to get back into the roll of things, and hopefully this Tuesday tonight will be rolling again. Uh, great show for you tonight. Thought I'd show you again here. We're going to do a show on show season. Show season. We're going to talk about all the aspects of what show season is all about. We're going to talk about product old product new product uh, we're going to talk about pro staff what they're supposed to be doing their responsibilities and things like that and what they should be doing when it comes to being show season and um then we'll talk to our marketing directors what they ha- what their expectations are and things like that and speaking of marketing director i've got the pnf <laughs> podfather here myself tonight we're going to bring him on here live and get his Thoughts on everything related to shows, being a marketing director and the paddle and fin director. Um, we'll really get a good insight and we'll pick his brain and get some information maybe to you guys, you pro staffers, you other marketing directors can use uh, from Brian. Brian. Brian's definitely knowledgeable and uh, look forward to picking his brain here. <laughs> so without further ado, let's go see let's go see if I can drag him on here and bring him on to the show. Brian Schilla, the killer. What's up, brother? Oh hey man, what are you into, man? So we're live raw unfiltered right here on our Paddle and Fin Media Podcast page. We also, guys, are streaming over on the Rusty Hook YouTube, the Twitch WV Rap, and Twitter, baby. Elon Musk has had He's got us rolling some live video there too. So, guys, Brian Schiller, the PNF guru, make sure you go hit comment. And let us know uh, what you guys think. So, buddy, what's good, my brother? Looking good, man. Looking good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna squeeze me in, squeeze you out. <laughs> so, um. So the, our topic tonight, or today, is show season. I know you just got home from a show a little bit ago. I spent four days at one in Tennessee and uh, got a few more in the, in, the, in the books. But you, my friend, as you were telling me pre-show, pre-roll, you, you're busy for the next several months. Um, so give, give our folks that are out there watching a little bit of idea what show season is. And let's and we'll, we'll dive into how shows operate for the businesses in when they're talking about moving to old product, uh, starting to get feedback on new product, and then how pro staff is a uh, help when it comes to that kind of thing. Yeah, man, it's uh. Show season's important, you know, that's where you get to introduce your company to a lot of new consumers, uh, visit with some old consumers. Um, like you said, move old inventory, obviously new inventory is coming in. I know, you know, my kayak shop locally, uh, we're getting shipments pretty much every other week from all the 
manufacturers for product coming in and uh so you want to get that out there right like there was yeah. a few kayaks released recently that you know we carry like the bonafide rvr we had at the show um you know old town had a tough time getting the uh top waters uh with the mincotas in them out last year due to just shortages on you know parts and things like that so you know, a lot of people have been waiting around for that stuff. So it's it's good to get that out in front of people and, uh, you know, uh, get it in their face. Kind of, you know, I worked uh, the Chicago Fishing Show this past weekend. So that was really good. We sold a few boats. Um, you know, I work, you know, some of these trade shows all over the country uh, for, you know, companies X, Y, and Z. Um you know, whether it be the company I work for, you know, companies I work with, like sponsorship wise, things like that, like uh, not next weekend, the weekend after I'll be down in Indiana for new canoe. Um, I've done that show. What this is year three or four for that one. Um, but, you know, it's it's interesting too when you jump around and do these different shows in different regions of the country because you can kind of see what works uh for some some shops and things like that and then kind of bring that back home and compose your own formula i guess you would say for um you know you with your local shop local business whatever it may be um you know i started off my year what was it the week of January 9th? I was at the big archery trade show. Um, so that's like the eye cast of the archery industry. And that's where you saw a lot of new products get released um, that will come out basically sometime between March and middle of summer going into, you know, next season's, you know, hunting season, so to speak. Right. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things, man, you, uh, it's, a, it's an important thing to do. Like currently with the company I work with, like they haven't really done consumer shows. They've only done industry trade shows really. And I think that's an important thing, right? Like the ICAST stuff, that's great. Mm -hmm. The ATA, that's great. But, you know, being out there, I like to call it being out there in the streets, you know, in front of your consumers and, you know, showing them your product and, you know, giving them an opportunity to buy it versus taking the chance on hopefully someday they find you on the internet. You right. know what I mean? Right. So, um, you know, that's the big thing, you know, and I mean, we could go whichever direction you want to go from there, but, you know, whether it be on the marketing end or the, um, you know, pro staff or end, you know? Yeah, man. I mean, uh, I, I think you hit it on the head with what, what you were talking about with the consumer shows versus the industry shows, because I, I feel like ICAST is a great way to expand businesses to stores. But if you sure. don't go, if you don't go and do a consumer show where people can come in and see what, stores will have then you're yeah. missing a segment of the population and you can't depend on stores to do marketing uh for sure. you because um th their budgets are, are are very limited um yeah and, and that's it too right like you don't know how these shops are displaying your products right you know whereas you know you have in your mind how they should be displayed and that's how it would help sell those products more however you know it's the old saying you can lead a horse to water it doesn't mean he's going to drink you yeah. know what i mean yeah that's so, like the, i heard someone that when i was at the tennessee show um the way the booth was set up some of the kayaks that i sell were sort of let up front and someone sure. said they were like well i'd like to see some of my kayaks up front and i i, I mean I could see that from his point of view because when people walk by, what are they looking at? They're looking what's right in front of them. Um, sure. And when you set up a store, uh, uh, you know, let's just use, let's say, bending branches or 
or, or another company, Dubro. You, you yeah. Know, we'll, we'll get more into Dubro, but when they have a product, you you want that somewhere in an area where it gets the most foot traffic. And, yeah. And right, not right, all, right. Not, not only in a store, but in, even at a show. <laughs> and uh, I know we sold probably 14 boats in the, the three days down there that I was there. And uh, what was really interesting and what was really cool was the, the different, you know, because there, there was some feel-free, there were New Canoe, there were Old Town, and then there were, of course, the Hobies. And so you, sure. got, a, you got a budget area there. This is right. a consumer show, so uh, this Frontier Outdoors does an outstanding job of, of, of Rod, Rod Snyder is a hell of a manager. Um, he had show prices, so he had kayaks marked down 300 bucks, you know, um, or more if you bought it at the show, if you paid show price. And sure. so th- he had people come back the next day with money when they came in yeah. the day before, so I Hold that boat. I'll be back tomorrow. He he would take a hold money, and they'd come back tomorrow. And we we this year was the first year that uh, we actually took him right out the door for him. Normally, would yeah. make him. He would wait till the end of the show, so he would still have displays. But this year, he's, we were like, man, take that cash because you just don't know if they're gonna come back. Give them get them that boat right out the door, and then we'll we'll go get another boat out of the trailer and bring it in. And uh, so. No, it's uh, it's interesting, man, because I've seen that work. Um, when I go down to the Indiana show, the kayak shop down there is Moving Water Outfitters. And that's how they, like, judge, like, how their year is going to go. And granted, that's a two-week-long show, but they bring their whole shop down there. Mm-hmm. Kayak, accessories, all that stuff, boats. And I think last year, it was something like, it was either 64 or 84 bolt boats they sold in two weekends, you know, across the board, all their manufacturers, right? But granted, they put up a demo pool. They have manufacturers booths there, things like that. They go all out. But um, I've seen how effective that is, you know, and we've started toying around with some stuff like at the Chicago show, right? Um our booth is back surrounded by all the big boats. So a lot of times, you know, people walk back there, they're walking right past us. And, you know, I said, Hey, let's do something different. This Let's put my new canoe fully decked out up in that front corner. Um, we put the new port on it, the XI three, I had the lights on it, everything. Right. And I said, the nice thing about this <coughs> people, in the center aisle can see this boat and it's going to draw them there. And then we also put my kayak trailer with the rooftop tent in there. And I said, now we're pulling in people that would have never looked at kayaks, but are like outdoors people. And they were drawn in by that rooftop tent. And it, it brought some people in to the booth that would have never stopped there before. And now they know about our shop. You know what I mean? We put some a little bit of eye candy in there. Yeah, definitely. And and uh, it, it brought some attraction to, you know, the brand, which is the kayak shop, you know, and, and all the vast things they offer. And that was something I tried to ask them to do previously and got a little pushback on it, you know, and I was like, look, let's try this. What's it going to hurt? We got an extra 10 feet of booth space this year because, um, and um we have done that show for many many years and they were like look we got extra space we're going to give you an extra 10 feet in the booth and i said perfect you know now we can utilize that and uh do something a little different and then now these guys have seen how well that's worked and um you know the attraction it brought into the booth like i said and you know, it was probably one of the best Schaumburg shows we've we've ever had uh, through Rocktown, which was really good. You know, it's like we did some things different. Granted, that show hasn't gone on for two years because of COVID and Chicago politics, but it came back and, it. you know, now the question is, did 
two years or did we do something different where it brought some new eyeballs? Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like that was a, a pretty good setup. I mean, and a plan that y'all put into action. I mean, it, that's just the way you got to do things. You just can't be stale. And right. it's good. It's right. good. That, it's good that you, uh, you were able to have them mix it up a little bit. Let's hold that thought. Sure. Let's take a quick break, guys. I want to show you the new PNF media that Brian threw together. It's our media intro for the show, for many of the shows here. Take a look at this. John Rapp back. Glad to be with you. Glad to be a part of the Paddle and Fin Network. As you saw, Brian's new PNF uh, premiere, uh, the media outlet video, it's, it's rock and solid. He's done some awesome work, and uh, glad to be here. Uh, right up front, guys, there is some buffering issues. I'm, I'm doing a, this transmission from my home using my Starlink, which is still a little bit iffy here in the mountains of West Virginia. So hang tight. It, we'll catch up. Let's go bring Brian back on, and uh, let's let's talk a little bit more about our show seasons, and what what we can expect uh, from Brian here in the next few months. Hey, buddy, you're back. I was going to say you need to go add some foil to the antenna. I can wait, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. What I what I need to do is cut out some mountains, you know, and some trees. And yeah. Some Get us some flat property up here, but you know, you know how it is. I, yeah, I know how it goes, man. It's, I'm out that's what happens when you live in the sticks. Yeah. You, you, I trade solitude, walk outside and pee off my porch, and nobody can see me running around naked. <laughs> you know? And uh, where, where you you have big city where but 150 people are 100 feet away. So, yeah, no, it's uh, it's one of those things, man. Like my little neighborhood's out in the middle of a bunch of cornfields, so I totally understand. We got like basically one internet provider, and thank God they're somewhat decent. So yeah, yeah, awesome. So, uh, guys, uh, if y'all haven't been caught up to speed with Brian, he is the marketing director for Dubro Outdoors, which includes Dubro Fishing and Pine Ridge Archery. Um, so go check out his resume on his facebook page on the left and you'll see those locations also <laughs> pnf media guru um so man tell us about the shows and stuff that you have on your on tap being the uh the marketing director for all of our uh those i just talked about um so i go to indiana for the first weekend of the two weekends uh which is I think it's February, the weekend of February. And then I'm at the Madison or Wisconsin Fishing Expo. Uh, Wisconsin Fishing Expo, I'm doing two seminars up there, kayak fishing related. Uh, Dubro Fishing will have a booth up there, as well as Rocktown Adventures. Uh, for the Indiana show, I'll be there for New Canoe, um, for Moving Water Outfitters. And then I'm off for like two weeks and then I go to MLF Redcrest and I'll be doing some stuff there for Tightline Anchors and uh, Lakewood Products. And then I'm off for like two more weeks and then I go up to the Bassmaster Classic. And again, be do I'll be there doing stuff for Tightline Anchors and Lakewood Products and then... I'm off till we go to ICAST, and I'll be at ICAST for Dubro. Oh, is Dubro going? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. They were there last year as well. I I don't I don't remember seeing them last year. Okay. Cool. Cool. Awesome. Awesome. 
Uh, I, I don't know what my schedule is going to be when it comes to ICAST this year. Um, but I am looking forward to Dell Hollow in a couple of months. Yeah. Yeah. And I keep forgetting to throw that in there, right? That's end of April. So, you know, I'll be bouncing around per usual, you know, just uh, making the rounds and stuff like that. But uh, it's all good stuff, man. I mean, that's that's the nice thing about being able to work with and for some of these companies, whether it be a sponsorship or a full-time job, you know, it's like, you know, being able to go to these shows, like I saw, uh, cause I got the chat pulled up here on my laptop. Um, you know, I saw Harold's in the chat and I actually met him at the Chicago fishing show. Nice. Um, this past weekend. And, um that was super fun and super cool we talked about that on the og show but you know it's it's cool to be at these shows being that we're on the media side of things with the podcast and you know i had quite a few people come up to me and they were like panel and finn right like i listen to your podcast and stuff like that like like harold and i keep forgetting to ask him he told me i'm horrible with details but he's either a FedEx or a UPS driver. And he drives around all day listening to fishing podcasts, you know, nice. paddling fins on that playlist along with like serious angler and a few others. And, um, you know, that's super cool to be able to meet the people that tune in week to week and listen to all the different shows and, you know, hear their feedback and, you know, how they listen to this show and they took this away from it and that show and took that away from it. You know, so it's 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 kind of cool on that aspect, you know, being on the media side and getting to meet the people that like to listen to me ramble every week, you know, but also being there and just, you know, working, you know, putting in the work for the companies I work with. And that's really helped me climb the ladder in some of these positions. You know, it's like, you know, usually in December, I reach out. And I'm like, hey, is there any shows I can come to help you with or, you know, set up a booth or, you know, sit in the booth, whatever it may be. And uh, I kind of formulate that schedule like middle end of December, um, generally, because, you know, most of those companies know where they're going. And then, you know, I end up usually getting phone calls like in January going, you know, oh, are you busy this weekend? Can you come out to this show? Like I had that happen uh, with the tight line guys. They wanted me to come to the East Tennessee show. Yeah. Would, 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 I was, would have loved to have yeah. you there. Yeah. I know. John I would have Thomas, loved to have been there. John Thomas spent loved, a lot of time over there. Yeah. And, and it looked like that show did really, well, but you know, like I said to them, you know, like I had already committed fully to, uh, being at Schaumburg, I said, if yeah. you know, I didn't have any prior commitments, I would have totally, you know, committed to that. And, uh, you know, and that spun into, well, can you come to Red Crest in the classic? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. I, I don't have anything going on then. Let's do it. You know what I mean? But, um, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's one of those things, man, like, you know, with, with the, the Rocktown show, both, Chicago and Madison, you know, part of our guys teams team deals uh, for the year is that they have to come and work one of the shows at least, you know, I think it's one one day, you know what I mean? So it helps us out tremendously because at Rocktown, because, you know, you got limited staff and you still have a shop you have to keep open and run, especially like in the winter time. You know, because we rent. You still with me? Um, and there you go. Okay. Oh. Yeah, it's dragging. It's sl it's dragging down yeah. a little bit, man. So it caught back up. It, I think. It, yeah, it did. Uh, uh, Harold responded to you, bro. He's a FedEx yeah. driver. Me. So. <laughs> it's just buffering. Yeah, a little bit of buffering. You got me again. Yeah, you're yeah. still there. Hey, let's take a quick break, and we'll finish that thought. All right, man.
six to five cup gorgeous number one go to five fishing supplies gear accessories and custom rigging look them up westbrooksupplycenter.com that's right Gadget supplying needs is the name for most products and gear check out gatgadgets.com don't bring power paddle pedal or power there's something for everyone check out feelfreeus.com Kane Outdoors custom plastic makers design consultants product reviewers and outdoor writers check out more at kaneoutdoors.com all right, guys, Sean Rapp, we're back, live, raw, unfiltered, and buffering. Got to love it. The mountains <laughs> of West Virginia. So I got Brian Schiller, the killer, the pod father, guru, media expert in the background. Let's bring him back on the show and let him finish talking about all things show season. All right, Big Daddy, you back. Ooh. Yeah, no, I was just saying, you know, like uh, with our Rocktown team guys, uh, it helps out extravagantly having them work at least one day. And usually those guys want to work a couple days, you know, for the weekend. They got cabin <laughs> fever. They want to talk fishing. But it helps us keep somebody at the shop and then, you know, guys at the show and, and have plenty of people in the booth to, uh, you know, help help cover any consumer traffic that we come have come through there. And uh this year we actually uh a father and son that i've met past couple of years working at the indiana show reached out and they were like hey we've always wanted to come up to that show could we come up get badges and hang out in your booth and help out and i was like absolutely yeah so you know it's uh it's one of those things man like if you reach out to a company nine times out of ten if if all they got to do is get you a badge they're more than willing to do that but on the flip side right like you know, packing up the booth and all that stuff. Like our guys stuck around to help us pack up Sunday after the show closed. And, you know, so we took them out to a real nice dinner and, and dessert and all that good stuff, you know, it's like, but you know, those guys know that, you know, that, that time that they spent there doesn't go unnoticed and they get taken care of because they go the extra mile. You know what I mean? So I noticed that uh, my marketing director guru from Dubro has been busy. Uh, I've seen a few posts from some fishermen out there that they have gotten their swag pack. They've been accepted as either brand ambassador, pro staff, or in some capacity as as a team member of Dubro. Um, it is contract season. Uh, I'm waiting on my contract to come in from Feel Free so I can re-up for the, the year and see what the expectations are that they want from me. And in, in the aspects as a pro staff and as a competitive team member, uh, you know, what I can give them and then what they give me for giving them, you know. Sure. So so how, how, did, how did you decide being, you know, expanding the Dubro name as you've already done so, so greatly uh, in, in the short time you've been there. And you know, it's true. I mean, you, you uh, that I, I, I'd never heard of them. And then, yeah, well, it's, it's funny. Like a lot of people will tell you they've never heard of them, but they actually have some of their products. And exactly. Don't realize it. And, that, and that's, that's uh, what I mean. Yeah. And that's what I've come, come to understand uh, with Dubro, but, yeah, we uh, we decided to put a like an ambassador slash pro staff program together. Um, I kind of adopted a program that I'm involved with um, uh, with another company, and it weeds out a lot of the riffraff because you have to go through a process. Um, but in there, like it's all laid out, like cut and dry, like this is what we expect of you. Um, and this is what you can expect of us. And I think I, I've learned over the years playing the pro staff game and all that good stuff. Like, you know, I used to have some stuff where like, it was just like, you didn't know what was expected of you. And granted you got like, you know, X amount of discount on something or whatever, you know, but 
you know, the swag packs and stuff, we sent that out to all our people. Um, we want them to be able to represent our brand and, and yeah. wear some of our gear while they're out on the water or in the woods. Hey, um, man, you know what they say, a picture's worth a thousand words. I mean, a, a, yeah. video, a, yeah, video, yeah, yeah. a video that has uh, something on it, you know, or, you know, yeah. it's seen by people. You know, I mean, the more the more that Dubro <laughs> logo is seen, you know, the better off we are, right? And, that's right. You know, Exposure, like the man. boss, the the boss, like he didn't hod. Like I I sent all the those packages out, and he kept seeing like the orders go through our system, and he was just like, "Please tell me you're done," you know, because he's he's like, "That's money going out the door, right?" But on the flip side, that's a small investment for what his return on investment is going to be, exactly. you know, just, just having the brand awareness out there and which is going to afford us to do more and better things down the road, you know, with those guys and gals that, you know, help get the word out about Dubro Pine Ridge archery and, and all that good stuff, you know? So, you know, it's one of those things, you know, like me personally, um, you know, I got a couple of companies that I work with that like, send those type of packages and you know it's kind of nice you know like holy crap like they're sending me some some free gear um and it's real nice stuff i get to wear it and feel proud to wear that right um and and proud to work with a company that actually cares and they're not just you know wanting to whore me out for a 20 percent discount or whatever it may be exactly you know? So um, it, it's good stuff, man. Those guys got uh, got a little extra goodie uh, on the fishing side and a product that uh, we're looking at bringing back, um, which once it's released, I think it'll be cool for the kayak market. Um, you know, I mean, it's, it's no secret. It's it's basically a tool holder, line cutter, bait hanger all in one, which yeah, is cool. I, so yeah, I saw the pictures of that. I was like, yeah, we put, we put a track mount on that, and it's 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 golden, you know. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So we've been putting that out, and we got some some new products in the works and stuff. But I mean, that's you know, for instance, like uh, went to our team, and you know, I was like, if you guys have any ideas uh, as far as the name for this thing, drop them in our group chat. Yeah, uh, would love to hear him, you know, and it's I think that's that's key. And that's something I've learned over the years is, you know, everybody sees things differently. But being a part of that feedback process makes you feel like you're part of that part company. Of the team. Yeah, you yeah, know what I mean? Included, right? right? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that's important, right? Like, you know, it's uh, that's something I've always uh, been happy to be a part of. Um, and I think those guys really enjoy it too, because there's been a few ideas tossed around, you know? So it's like, you know, it, it, it's really fun and it makes you, those guys feel more engaged with the company versus, you know, just every time they post on social media, they're, you know what I mean? It makes them feel like they're a part of something and that's the way it should be, you know? Yeah. Without a doubt. I still like Shilla the killer. <laughs> you're not the only one that's what uh that's what the guys over at tightline call me yep chilling the killer <laughs> so man you've been out uh i guess you guys got some ice up right now you got to play with any of your ice stuff uh i haven't played with any ice stuff because i've been just super focused on you know show season and some marketing stuff and uh i did see there were some guys on a lake uh, today out by the office, went into the office this morning for a little bit. And then, uh, in the neighborhood here, I think there's some guys out there right now. So I may, I may get out tomorrow. I know, uh, uh, Brad Hurlboss, uh, one of our paddle and fin guys called me up and, uh, he's planning on going out tomorrow and invited me up to, uh, the Madison area to go out and try to catch some, some crappies. I like to see a big maybe, pull, pull a big wall up out of that hole. Some Walters, yeah, I'd like to see that happen too. I mean, mm -hmm. it is possible, <laughs> especially walking around at the All Canada show today. You know, that's all I saw was walleyes and pike everywhere. You know, yeah, 
or a big old fat pike. That would be pretty cool. Yeah. 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 Well, Jay's in, Jay's not here. Jay's infamous for catching them on hot dogs through the ice. <laughs> so, you know, I yeah, might I was, have to go out and carry on the the old Jay Randall tradition. Should you should man? I I miss Jay. Uh, he was in the, he, on a trip when I was in Tennessee. Mm-hmm. Thirty minutes from his house. I was, I was disappointed to get to see Jay Bob, but uh, been nice. Yeah. Yeah, he so, was out in Vegas visiting a friend and he came back in one piece and he didn't call either of us for bail money so he i know did all right. I, I mean I, I thought I, I thought i was he was gonna call the old federale for some help but uh... <laughs> oh, too good too good yeah man so i put in my two-week notice i'm done um next friday really done with the federale uh, 30 years of carrying a gun, I'm done. So Nice, dude. Well, congratulations, yeah. dude. All right. That's awesome. That's awesome. So what are you going to do now? Just sit around I, and I am gonna... nag your wife? I, probably. <laughs> Beth, will see a, Beth will see a lot of me when, the, when it's raining. But uh, I'm going to take, <laughs> hot... take my hot spot, and I'm going to take my yeah. camera, and I'm going to set up my, my stuff and try to go to a few lakes and just go out and do some live streaming for an hour and do a little fishing. That's cool. Um, nice. And I'm, I'm hoping I can get Romel to reach out to me. I'm going to try to get that NK300 from him. And, nice. Uh, I, I didn't even tell you, man. So I went and got my – I haven't been in a feel-free lure in five years. I've always went with the Dorado or went with the big fish. Yeah. I've been in the Mokin the last two. But because we got that new swivel seat, I'm like, okay, I'm going to get that swivel seat. We'll get that, uh, the uh, Lure 11.5, and we'll rig it up. Got with John Thomas from Yak Gadget, and he made me a mount for the back of that kayak, so I'm going to set it up. And I think I might even get it wrapped, put a big rusty hook PNF sticker right on the edge of the sides. Nice. Put a Dubro, nice. Dubro sticker. WVKA sticker, Yak Gadget, feel free, you know. Just, and I'm going to set it up, man. It's going to be my ride. So when we do, hopefully, when I see you in April, my friend, yeah, I'm going to be decked out in style. So. I like it, dude. I like it. I've, I've contemplated wrapping a kayak, like, because I'm going to probably get a new Unlimited this year. Yeah. Um, it, it, you know, it's not that I need a new one, but – um. You know, I I got an opportunity to get a new one, so I was thinking about like doing that and then taking the one I have now and just leaving it set up strictly for hunting season for oh, yeah. you know because yeah. I I duck hunt onto that. So you know, I had thought about doing that too, and uh, I just got a new truck, so I'm thinking about wrapping that as well. Yeah, but, you were talking about that pre-show. Uh, that would be cool. Yeah. I mean, I would love to see a nice, really cool, big old sickle and PNF right there on the side. You know, that would be, yeah, be pretty I, sweet. Hey, what color is the truck? Is it white, black? No, it's red. That's okay. part of the reason why I want to get it wrapped. I'm not like the biggest fan of red, but I needed a vehicle, man. A white lightning uh, frame rusted out on me, so I was. Uh, that was unexpected because – it was running strong, but uh, yeah. I took it in to get some work done. And mechanic called me when I was down at uh, the big archery show, and uh, he's like, "Hey, uh, you're lucky to be alive." Yeah. <laughs> but uh, bad news after- is, is, is your truck is no more. You, uh, I wouldn't drive this any further than you have to. So, 4, which whatever, mile, man. That four thousand mile trip was a little hard on her. Well, I mean, I went to Florida twice last year, yeah. and uh, yeah, I mean, she had three hundred thousand miles on her. But you know, you know how it is in the Midwest with all the road salt, salt. and that just mm-hmm. eats vehicles up. So, new truck's nice; it's nice and clean. So that's why I'm like, ah, maybe I'll get it wrapped, you know, and see how right. that goes. But we'll see. So I look forward to seeing it in April, man. Yeah, yeah. Still gonna we'll sell that? Surprise. You gonna sell that trailer? Got any, uh, bites? got any bites? You know, I had some interest in it, but I don't. I don't know. 
I mean, I might hold on to it now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I was being real cheap and didn't want to have a car payment again, but I got a, a very, very small car payment with this truck, so um, I may just hold on to it. I don't know. I, I go back and forth because I got the the truck bed rack so I could haul kayaks on that and stuff like that and i'm usually not hauling more than two boats so right yeah you should be good, you should be good. yeah yeah so we'll see man we'll see but uh i did i did i i don't think i've said anything but uh uh at the chicago show uh one of the lodges up on malax in uh, minnesota was having a deal buy two nights get two nights free and I think they're still running it because they're still doing some sh- and the boys in smallmouth and walleye heaven up there. Um, I got a two bedroom cabin uh, for four nights and uh, my, my dad and my mom are going and awesome. me and my wife. So it'll be, it'll be a cool trip. We haven't had a trip like that in forever. Um, just because I'm always so busy doing stuff. Um, so get to fish with the old man for some smallmouth, and I'm really looking forward to that. So that's the beauty of show season. You get to find some gems like that. I mean, yeah. for for four nights, two-bedroom cabin, full kitchen, living room, everything, a boat slip with 600 bucks. Can't beat it, man. That's, that's dirt cheap, man. Dirt yeah. cheap, especially for up there. Heck yeah, I'm, I'm jealous. You guys go have a blast. Hey, let's take a quick break, and then we'll come back in. We'll wrap things up. Um, we'll talk about you know what to expect for Del Hala, and we'll go from there. Lake Resort, West Virginia's number one destination for whitewater, hiking, zip lining, and more. Check out atrack.com. Fish Supply Company, Georgia's number one go-to fly fishing supplier. Gear, accessories, and custom rigging. Look them up. Westbrooksupplycenter.com. Jack Rabbit. Value for supplying you with American-made products and gear. Check out yakgadget.com. Feel free kayaks. Paddle, pedal, or power. There's something for everyone. Check out feelfreeus.com. Paint Outdoors is a custom plastic maker, design consultant, product reviewer, and outdoor writer. Check out more at paintoutdoors.com. All right, guys, John Rapper back. We've been running live, raw, filtered, and buffering for the last 43 plus minutes here on the Paddle and Fin podcast page. I've got the podfather with me here, Brian Schiller, in the background, and hopefully. We can spend the next 10 minutes or so telling you guys about something that we've talked here and there about, and that is the Paddle and Fan podcast, two-day open. It includes some Tennessee clubs. I know that guys from West Virginia got it on their schedule, and they're going to run down there as much as they can. But we'll we'll bring back the Podfather, and we'll talk about some of the great experiences that we've had in Tennessee over the years. All right, Big Daddy. You yeah, nice. buddy. So give them a rundown, man. Tell them about what they can expect. Year four. Uh, yeah, is it year four or year it's, three? It's year four for you, think, year three for tournament. Yeah, it's – uh, it. this whole, like, weekend extravaganza started three years ago, and it's – it's grown over the years. It, it like doubles every year. And, um, it's, it's a great opportunity to get together with some great people, great fishermen, fish, a destination fishery that everybody loves to fish. Everybody knows it for smallmouth, but the largemouth are just as big in there. And, um, you know, it's central Tennessee, so it's centrally located in the country. Um, and that's why we kind of chose that area and the good folks at Eastport Marina, um, welcome us there as well. And, uh, 
it's a beautiful venue, uh, beautiful fishery, great food. It's a two day event, uh, April 22nd and 23rd. Yes, sir. So the, the spawn should be going on right then. It's like, we've usually done it beginning of April, but we pushed it back this year, uh, hoping that the spawn would be in full swing and uh, the weather would be nice. We've had some cold, cold days earlier in the month of April. Um, so it, sh it should be a great turnout this year. Um, tons of great prizes are given away. Uh, the prize pool is 100% payback. We don't take anything out for Tourney X. Um, that's covered by all our sponsors. So every dime you put into the pot goes to the payout, which, you know, was something we really strived on. Uh, we get big checks printed for like the top 10 anglers uh, <laughs> and and big bass. Your entry fee includes big bass. So, right. you know, we're, we're, we've all fished tournaments, you know, we've put a lot of thought and energy into the whole format of this thing. And every year, everybody says what a great time it is and what a well-run event it is. Um, so they keep coming back and, you know, like you stated, the West Virginia guys put it on their tournament schedule because they loved it. Like right. you guys kept coming down and more and more would come each year. And then you guys would go back, tell the rest of the group and more of them would come down. And um, I know it's the same thing with uh, Central Tennessee kayak anglers. Like they were a part of it last year as well. And uh, those guys had a blast, you know, like I think there was a few members of their club that didn't fish it and they were regretting not fishing it oh, you know yeah. and uh one of those anglers um and that and that's a beauty too right like we try to make sure everybody goes home with something and um you know there's always some bigger prizes like you know the first big year we did it um we gave away three kayaks we did have two events so one kayak went to one event two kayaks went to the main event and then we scaled it down to where it was just going to be one event. It got too confusing trying to do those over, overlapping events. And uh, last year, Richard from Eastport, you know, at the end of oh, award ceremony, yeah. was like, who here didn't yeah. catch a fish exactly. all weekend in the tournament? Two guys. And those guys, the, there was three. Oh, it was okay. I thought there was three. Uh, it was either two and, or three, yep. And uh, they didn't want to stand up because mm -hmm. they were embarrassed. And he was like, trust me, you are going to want to stand up. So mm -hmm. Susie had to go through and figure out who it was. They stood up and uh, he was like, pick a number one through 10. Right. And the guy that was closest, Richard, gave him a brand new Newport Vessels NK180 motor. And the 1, whole place 000, went crazy. $1,000. Yeah. Motor. motor. Just, just for showing just, up. And not catching yeah. a fish. So we've always tried to do cool things like that. And I think yeah. that's the reason why everybody comes back. Not only that, but like I said, all the anglers that at are attend are really good people. Um, you get to taste test John's moonshine. So uh, that that's always a big hit. Um, hey, you know, that's my, that's my way to, and this year, <laughs> I, I, I don't know if I'm gonna fish the event now now that I'm part of the PNF family, but I sure. will still I will still have sampling there, and maybe I can, <laughs> uh, of course, you know, help my WVKA guys out by taking the competition out, make them have a little bit of a headache early that next morning. <laughs> But it, it's good time, man. And we always have a dinner uh, Saturday night after check-in, and everybody really enjoys that. We've had live music there as well. So um, we're still ironing out all those fine details. But, um, you know, Richard at Eastport, he offers up camping for, like, um it's primitive camping but there is a place like where you could charge batteries and use a bathroom and things like that um he was renting out rooms in his houseboats they have cabins there things like that so yeah, visit e yeah visit e eastport eastport.info yeah. and uh, you can see all that good stuff so guys if you want to go look this up brian's talking about it's the paddle and fin on tourney x 
Yep. Go look for it. It's already listed. Susie's already got everything up. The rules. It's a hundred dollar buy-in. That includes your big bass pot for the two-day tournament. So you're looking at a forty dollar, forty-five dollar a day entry fee for the tournament. That's a that's very reasonable. And uh, as Brian has talked about, Richard has great great prices on his accommodations um, down there in the uh, at, at Eastport. I uh, I know in the past. Now we don't know what his prices are going to be for this year, but it was like fifty dollars a night. Could be a little bit more, but fifty dollars a night for your rooms on the houseboat. Now you got to think about it. Sitting on the houseboat, you're a hundred yards from the restaurant and the the, the marina store. The yak at the yak store is his store with all his equipment, and tackle and baits, hard hard uh, um, stuff. You know that you can get hooks, line, cold drinks. The the restaurant. All the bathrooms right there within a hundred yards of the water. You can moor your boat up. That's the most enjoyable thing that I've had over the, the past several years that I've done fishing is being able to stay on the houseboat, walk right out 10 feet from where I sleep, get in my boat and go. Park my boat, go back in, go eat, go to bed. I mean, it's, I can't can't highly recommend uh, a stay at Eastport Marina uh, with those guys down there with uh, Richard and crew. It, yeah, it's a very, very relaxing weekend. Like, yeah, there's some competition going on, but it's not so cutthroat where you're like, you know, you feel like you have to like go down and pre-fish for a week or whatever. Like, it's very laid back, and uh, I think that's why guys like it. Yeah, it's so yeah, it's it's, it's yeah. the, 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 there is the atmosphere is not ultra competitive. It's more social with, hey, congrats, you know, everybody's shaking the hand, the guy that had the 85 inch day, you know, or, or two 85 inch days. Great job, man. You know, it's right. a social, it's a social thing. Uh, and, and it's one of the great ways to start your year off. Um, I, I'm looking forward to it. So. Yeah, same here, man. Like, I'm I'm a little sad I'm not going to get it as much time down there as I usually do this year, but uh, I'm just happy to be going back down, see everybody, see new faces, see old faces, and, you know, just have a great weekend, you know, and, and that's what it's all about is, uh, you know, we're not trying to break the bank. We're trying to make it an, infor- uh, an inf- affordable, enjoyable tournament in a destination that everybody wants to go at some point or another agreed agreed man so guys harold harold anderson fedex driver sign up come join me and brian we want to see you there brian i appreciate you taking your afternoon to hang out with me um i appreciate you big daddy (laughs) yeah man yeah i know i know i know know. I, guys, there's a joke behind that, and I ain't saying it. <laughs> no, Two brother. More. No, yeah, brother. Two more. No, I hear you. Yeah. Those days, I don't know if I can handle those day kind of days anymore. But uh, I'm not young like you. And, and happy birthday, brother. Happy birthday. You're breaking up a little bit, man. What did you say? I just wanted to wish you an upcoming very happy 39th plus a few years birthday. <laughs> Yeah, we got, uh, what, a week from Monday, I think. Yeah, yeah, I think it's a week from Monday. So, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome, buddy. You're welcome. Just, well, just another day in the books, brother. Just yeah. another day in the books. Better as long than as the al- I'm vertical. Yeah, better than the alternative. Yeah, as long as I'm vertical, life is good, my friend. Hey, and, and with that, let's close up shop. God bless you, man. You too, brother. All right, guys. So, John Rapp here on the Pat on Finn podcast page. <coughs> That was our, our Paddle and Finn media guru, the OG, Brian Schiller. We sit down tonight and we talked a little bit about uh, show season and what you guys can find out, you know, what's going on with the shows, you know, 
most of the shows and all the stores are bringing out old product at good discount prices if it's a consumer show you can find some good deals so take some money with you and go see your favorite show see your favorite retailer um, then you can also see and talk to the the marketing directors like guys like Brian and find out you know a little bit about what's coming up in the future what their newer products are going to be and you get to talk to a lot of pro staff for these these guys guys that you may interact a lot with here on Facebook so I highly recommend you you uh, look at the show schedules in your area check and see what they're about look and see who's on the on the, the schedule for those shows and go visit them um, but anyway I want to thank you for taking a few moments during your Saturday afternoon to sit down and watch me and Brian and hear us uh, ramble about all things that we love, which is kayak fishing. Be blessed, and uh, I'll let you guys out of here. Let me find my end, and we're out. Yeah, buddy. All right, buddy.